The Second Letter of Peter, Chapter 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according and his divine power as given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound they make you, that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he is purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so, entrant, for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore I will not be nil, nil, negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though we know them, and be established in the present truth. Yes, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off my this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shewed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able to, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard, when we were with him in the holy mount. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard, and when we were with him in the holy mount. God was happy. Jesus was perfect. Thank you, Lord. So we, also, so we also, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Chapter 2 But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily share, shall bring in damnable heresies, even deny the Lord that bought, brought, bought them, and bring up themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and through conventionists shall they be feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingers not and their damnation slumbers not for if god spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world but save Noah and the eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly. 
and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and deliver just Lot, vexed with filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from the day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knows how to deliver the ungodly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed, and they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusations against them before the Lord, but these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of those things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are on, on and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart they have exercised with convictious practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his in iniquity. The dumb ass, speaking with the man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophets. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were unclean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if they, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, and overcome the latter end is worse than them in the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. That's powerful. For it has been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Never turn back. Stand with your face to God. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Chapter 3 This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds in the way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days of scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and prediction of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men slack, count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt the fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. 
seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, that the manner of persons ought you not to be in all conversation and godliness. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with prevalent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelt with righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that for the long suffering of the Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him that is written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do, also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Yes, therefore, beloved, seeing you known these things before, beware lest you also, being led away to the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We love you with all of, your, all of our hearts, Lord. Thank you for your word. In your loving name we pray. Amen.